with me now, John Brummett, columnist with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Always good to catch up with him. John, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you, Roby. Well, we um, saw a funeral for the ages this last weekend with the uh, laying to rest of the late Senator David Pryor. You got to take in quite a few observations on that. And mm -hmm. let's, let's talk some David Pryor stories today. Let's talk about some things that happened sure. at the funeral, things that you found particularly interesting. Okay. Well, okay. That's just open, open ended. Want me to want me to uh, start riffing on it? I'll be happy to. I thought that uh, the the mainly the program was uh, more uh, stories appropriately uh, than scripture. There was a scriptural a scripture theme, but uh, uh, basically it was it was stories told by uh, the senator's three sons and uh, the special guest eulogist, uh, former President Clinton. Most people, and I say this uh, not to review a funeral in terms of performance, but most people found the stories told by the sons more engaging than the more thoughtful, quieter presentation by the president or President Clinton. However, uh, Clinton did make the best observation, I thought, because after all, uh, he is he is Clinton. And he, he, he said, Dale Bumpers and I loved to tell jokes for the purpose of getting laughs. David Pryor didn't tell jokes. He told stories that had a humorous element from which he could make a point. And I, I've got a column coming, I think, tomorrow. Uh, yeah, the uh, into, uh, headlined uh, Pryor Parables, because he told his stories were homilies. They weren't. Uh, guffaw laughter they were sort of wise observations and it was it was a point i it was a, it was an aspect of prior style that i hadn't thought of in that way but, but one of them was that a good friend of priors when he, when they went to college from camden left his beloved girlfriend at home missed two or three opportunities to go back as uh, as planned to visit her but wrote her every day and what did she end up doing she ended up marrying the mailman. In other words, you you, <laughs> you got to show up. You got to deliver in person in really love, politics, business. You know that in your business, you got to show up. Uh, and so that was a funny story that may or may not have been ex precisely true. Uh, may have been for the point of, for, for the reason to make a point, but it was sort of a David Pryor parable that, uh, you know, if you if you just uh, if you just send it by mail, she may take up with the mailman because he's there, you know, he's on. And uh, uh, it wasn't the funniest story today, but I thought, it's, I see what you're saying, Mr. President. Prior, Prior's not looking for a punchline; he's looking to make a point. And I think you see that over and over in a lot of what he said, some of his stories. I thought another good story that was told was the one that uh, centered around Frank Broyles. Can you recall that <laughs> for us? This was told by Mark, a uh, son, Mark, who made a tremendous, a very good uh, presentation filled with stories. And it sort of goes to the point of David Pryor's understated wisdom. Uh, he got a call one day, uh, Coach Broyles was called. And he picked up the phone, and Coach Broyles, according to this story, was just nearly apoplectic. He said, <laughs> as the story began from Mark, uh, Broyles said, do you know somebody named Dave Stockman, David Stockman? And Pryor said, well, yes, he's the head of management and budget for President Reagan, and he's the one trying to do all this budget cutting. And Broyles said, uh, that's what I'm talking about. Do you know that he's proposing to take away the charitable deduction for donations to college athletic programs. Why, David, this would put the Razorback Fund out of business. That's the only way we can compete. Uh, and we, you got to do something about that for us. And Pryor said, uh, Coach, uh, let me think on that, and I'm going to get back with you real soon. I'm just going to have to think on that a while. So he hung up, and he leaned back in his chair, and he thought for a while, and then he called for the staff to bring him the morning Washington Post sports section. 
and he got the sports section and it was the day he apparently knew it was going to be the day where the new top 20 is now top 25 in those days the top 20 the, the top 20 rankings were out and he went down he looked at the top 20 rankings and he called each senator both senators from each state with a team in the top 20 could be 40 senators unless there was a texas or california or somebody had multiple teams and he told them what was getting ready to happen to their highly successful football programs foundation with this proposal that David Stockman was making. And by noon, within two hours, according to Mark of uh, the coach calling, I sent to prior calling back and said, uh, coach, uh, David Stockman's bill is dead on arrival in the Senate. Uh, because he, I mean, he, he had this idea of how to operate in which you don't, you don't stress your concern you engage others on their terms. Uh, and that's why uh, Harry Reid once made the comment that David Pryor was one of the finest legislators, most effective legislators uh, he ever saw in the Senate. And I think it's because of that kind of that kind of thing. And, you, you know, Bumpers was more elegant, uh, eloquent. Uh, Clinton became president. But of that of that trio, Pryor was sort of the uh, understated, uh, understated all shucks wisdom. That was his style. Yeah. So that was that story. I think one of the things that um, Senator Pryor is famous for is when he was Congressman Pryor and he lost to John McClellan in that epic 1972 race. His son, Mark, I think, picked up on this characteristic uh, and quality as well. David Pryor gave a concession speech that many have said is what made him remain a viable candidate for governor that next election cycle. Uh, I was too young to remember that concession speech, but you're not. Um, what, do you, no, no, what, do you, what do you recall about David Pryor and his ability to kind of meet the moment in times like that? Because you'll remember when Mark Pryor lost his attorney general's race that first time, I think that that eloquent speech that he gave in concession really kind of set him up for the next run. It's uh, graciousness and humility, those two things. And you come by those things naturally. And, uh, you know, as, as President Clinton said, David Pryor was not a perfect man. Let's not say that. None of us, uh, none of us is. But uh, the, the, that kind of graciousness and that kind of humility is natural. You either have it or you don't. But you also, you have a political instinct, and Pryor always had a perfect political instinct. That was a tough race. He was about to beat McClellan, and they did a, they did a debate, and McClellan hit him with the union contributions and made fun of his saying this, his, Pryor's money was coming from cookie jars and kind of destroyed him with this litany of big union money that was coming into his campaign. So his speech was notable for just the grace and the humility. And the story is that Whit Stevens, when the, when Bumpers ran for, ran against Fulbright, Whit Stevens, who was quite the political power broker, was all for the more liberal David Pryor for governor, largely because he was so impressed with the, with, with, with David Pryor's humility and grace and how well he handled uh, that, uh, that defeat. It seems almost contrived in some ways that this is his style and it was a style that he knew how to use, but you only have it by a, by a natural skill for it, I think. And he had it more effectively. The all shucks, regular connection, uh, polit uh, political skill uh, was more evident in him than anyone I've ever covered. I'll put it that way. I think you'd probably agree. Yeah, no, there's no doubt about it. There was a genuineness to him that uh, mm -hmm. you don't see in a lot of politicians these days, not to knock any particular politician, but it just, uh, cause there are some genuines that are out there, but he was just one on a pretty elevated stage for a long period of time. It was, um, it was good and healthy for Arkansas. Uh, and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the funeral was, uh, was all about that really. Uh, and, uh, filled the uh, second Presbyterian large uh, sanctuary and, uh, and, and, and the family knew what we want to do is tell stories because that's what, that's what David loved, and that's what he could do, and that's what his political career was largely about. And it was it was a joy. It was a joy. He's John Brummett, columnist with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Always good to get your take on things. Thank you for sharing those stories and uh, that experience. Uh, great, great pleasure, Robinson.